A very important hadith of the Prophet وسلم, which illustrates for us the a couple of points. First, that the permissibility, of course, of a man's, one of his wives or someone to visit him while he's in itikaf. So that you can, of course, have other activity if there's a need to do so during itikaf while you're secluded in the masjid. And another thing we learn from this hadith is the importance of having husn of dhun, you know, a good thought about your brothers and sisters in Islam or give them the benefit of the doubt as well as a person who is who's in a predicament which may appear a certain way that they can make clear for the others who may have doubt about them in order to remove their doubtfulness and we're going to give you the beautiful example of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is in this hadith عن صفية بن عن صفية بنت حيي حيي رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم متفق معتقفا في المسجد فأتيته أزوره ليلا فهدفته ثم قمت ل لأنقل أنقلب فقام معي ليقلبني وكان مسكن مسكنها في بيت أسامة بن زيد فمر رجلان من الأنصار فلما رأي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أسرع في مشي فقال فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم على رسلكما رسلكما إنها صفية بنت هي حي حي فقال سبحان الله يا رسول الله فقال إن الشيطان يجري من ابن آدم مجري الدم وإني خفت أن يقذف في قلوبكما شر وقال شيء رواه بخاري ومسلم in this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith of Safiya, radiallahu ta'ala anha, that she came to visit the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while he was in itikaf, he was secluded in the masjid, during the last ten nights of Ramadan. And she spoke with him while he was making itikaf about whatever they spoke about. Then she got up in order to leave, and it was at night. So the Prophet ﷺ got up with her as well, in order to take her to the home safely, because it was at night, ﷺ. And her home at this time was in the house of uh, Usama bin Zayd, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So then two men from the Ansar, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, they were walking by and they saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with Safiya. So when they saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they, they walked very quick. And then the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said, basically what means, uh, to slow down. Basically, why are you in a hurry? The Prophet ﷺ said, why are you in a hurry? Verily, it is Safiya bint Huyaya. Huyya. Huyya. And then the Ansar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, they said, Subhanallah ya Rasulullah, 
glorify be to Allah, Ya Rasulullah. Because subhanAllah, we use that. It's used in the Arabic language for ta'ajjib. To show like a surprise or, or something like this that you say, subhanAllah, glorify be to Allah. So they made it at a ta'ajjib like Rasulullah, you know, you know, we were hurrying, we, we, we felt shyness. O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet alayhi salatu wa said, Verily the shaitan moves through the blood of the children of Adam. And I was fearful that you, that something would be placed in your heart from evil meaning by seeing me with a, a woman that you couldn't make out in the depths of the night, or that something would be placed in your hearts. This was in Bukhari and Muslim. From this hadith, and there's another riwayah, but we'll just stick with this riwayah, and bring some of the benefits that Sheikh Ali Bassam brought from this hadith, which are immense. One of the benefits... The Shaykh mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, This hadith shows us the permissibility of itikaf in general, and especially during the uh, last 10 nights of Ramadan. The permissibility, and that it, you know, it's something that you should strive to do. Another benefit of this hadith is that. If you need to speak out of necessity and, and from, from very uh, yasir, you know, the, the speech is not, you're not excessively speaking, that this does not negate your itikaf. This does not affect your itikaf, your seclusion in the masjid. And especially if there's maslaha, if there's a benefit in you speaking, meaning that it is some necessary thing you have to handle some affair with someone or something that's absolutely necessary. But even if it's not necessary, as long as it's not excessive, that does not affect your itikaf. It does not harm it. As long as it's not muharram, muharramat. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith illustrates the excellent manners of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his gentleness with his wives. And may Allah forgive us of our shortcomings for not following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with our wives and being more gentle and more caring. A lot of times we just say, no, just take a taxi. No, just go home your own way. Instead of being like the Messenger alayhi salatu wa sallam who got up from itikaf to take his, his wife uh, to, to deliver her to the home. Alayhi salatu wa sallam. And another benefit of this hadith is that it is necessary for a person to remove the doubtfulness from others if a situation like this arises where people have shubahat. Possibly you might be out and... Maybe you're out with your sister and the people don't know that that person is your sister. And you see some brothers and then they feel shy about that situation. You can say, oh, this is my sister, so and so. Or whatever the situation is, so as to remove the doubt from the people's heart. So that they don't think you're with strange women and that you're a person who is out and about doing things that are impermissible. Another benefit of this hadith is that the shaitan, this hadith shows us that the shaitan has a strong power to influence people. And that he goes through our, he runs through our veins. So the shaitan is ever so close in order to try to get you to go away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the correct path. Another benefit of this hadith as this hadith shows us also the gentleness of the Messenger of Allah in the way that he 
made things clear for his companions, from the, for the Ansar, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, that he did not beat them over the head, he did not curse them, he did not say, what are you, what are you thinking, or, uh, you know, something like this, like some of us might react, but rather he was gentle, and he was kind, and he was illustrating and teaching his companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, wa sallallahu sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Another benefit of this hadith that the Shaykh mentions is that it's permissible to be alone with your wife during itikaf, to speak to her about, you know, whatever the situation is, as long as it's not going to be a situation where the, your desires are going to be raised and you're going to fall into those things which are going to break your itikaf. Those are some of the benefits of this hadith and another benefit the Shaykh uh, our Shaykh uh, Shaykh Abdullah bin Hajar Hafidullah Ta'ala he mentioned when we studied this hadith he mentioned he said that it is uh, a necessity to remove the doubts of others if it's a situation where they have a negative uh, that they have a pessimistic view about what you're doing or they're skeptical in a negative way about some situation as we mentioned with the situation if someone were to see you with your sister and then you made clear this is my sister this is not my girlfriend this is not so and so whatever this is my my sister or whatever the situation so that this is uh, something that uh, the Muslim should do and this is from good manners in Islam and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam